Hello. This video is um, is on the Caligo vision. Some time back, I showed about how you could get better controllers for those clone Nintendo classics from China, and um, somebody sent me a letter and said they appreciated it, and they said, "Well, you ought to have a video on the Caligo and." on how to do repairs and how to do this and that well I don't know how to do repairs on it and I thought well that'll be my last video on talking about how to do something that'll enhance or make it better for your Caligo or Atari or whatever or whatever but something happened to me uh, through a number of events and trouble that I, I come across something that I think can help other people um, because it works for me and it is, it is a troubling thing. Um, as I've seen in YouTube, it seems like a lot of people have had the same problem um, that I had, that you get glitches on the, the screen and everything when you're playing your Kali go, oh, what is it? And, uh, what I did was I cleaned the cartridge and, and, and cleaned the connectors and it would play good for a while and then the screen would mess up and and then finally uh, you see on YouTube it's probably your switch it's probably your switch um, so I thought well I'm gonna have to take it apart and spray the switch like they said so I finally got that that thing apart and um, I've been using a cleaner for years that's totally safe, made to clean IC chips, um, leaves no residue, and um, I've used it to, to clean my Game Boy and uh, other things. And the clips where you stick the cartridge in, I just get that sucker and this here, uh, this is a... Uh, CRC QD electronic cleaner and I don't know how many companies is selling this but probably not very few or many Radio Shack used to have their version of it but you know they're going out of business and so I finally got that thing apart and I sprayed that I sprayed that switch several times I moved the switch back and forth I sprayed it and sprayed it about three times a long burst and I was a little scared that it might have hurt the Caligo but it never has hurt it using this IC chip cleaner stuff so I waited for it to dry or rather it dried while I put it back together and hooked it back up to the TV and oh for a month or so it worked great but then it came back the switch was still dirty so they talk about this recommending this stuff about take the switch out take it apart and clean it or replace it with a uh, toggle switch from Radio Shack so I ordered the toggle switch and I took it apart again and then I thought I would attempt to to take out the switch and take it apart and clean it and put it back together I soon saw it was an extremely very hard project um, I desoldered the two prongs on the end on the board and was going to pull the switch out and everything went wrong um, my my wick that's supposed to suck up the solder wasn't working when I melted the solder it wouldn't go into the wick and then I got to looking at it and I got to looking at how that switch was made and I thought I will never get that thing back together I can't do this and um, so I, I said I'll just try cleaning it again and I, I say well if it still doesn't work um, I'll get somebody who repairs TVs or something and that would be the best thing to do if you're not super good at soldering get a TV repairman or a smartphone repairman um, that's used to doing a lot of soldering and take it apart first because they may mess 
they may mess it up more than you will taking it apart and, and get them to do it. But you may not have to if you do what I did. You may not have to do that. I ordered the switch uh, from Radio Shack. It fits right in the hole at the top when you take out the plastic switch of the Caligo. But you gotta, you have to get some wires and you have to solder both ends and you have to do, you know, it, it, it's difficult. And if and um, if you get anything wrong, well, you messed it up. And I saw that it, it looked too difficult for me. But what I, I thought that I would do would be that I would take the switch, the Caligo, and take it to this TV repairman and say, look, this is what you got to do. Here's, here's where you connect the wires and, and let somebody who solders five days a week do it. Somebody that knows how to solder very good. And don't even attempt it yourself and, unless you do a lot of soldering. So, but so far, I haven't had to put the switch on. What I did when I took it apart again, I think I'm talking too long, but uh, anyway, I took that thing apart a second time and it was even harder to take it apart. And let me in, let you in a little secret. When you watch the video on how to take it apart, and I hate to say this, but this, this is really the way to get it apart. You stick your fingers in there and you pull and you do this. You may get lucky and get it apart. But the sure best way to do it is the way this TV repairman said that he does it. The same way he said there's TVs just like the Caligo that is extremely hard to take apart. And he does exactly what I had to do. Once I had that crack going, and you kind of start in the back and work your way to the front, doing like this, I could not get the top part pried from the bottom. So I started from the back and got myself a flathead screwdriver and started running it up a little bit, and then you turn it, and then if you turn it, and then all of a sudden it'll go pop, and it'll pop open. And you may have to do it on the right side. Now that's how you really get it apart. The only trouble is you're going to get a couple of little bent marks on the side. But being black, you're probably not even going to notice it. And you're, and you're only going to do just enough to get that thing to pop. Now that's how to get it apart. You work that screwdriver slowly to the front and you turn it like this and it will, and all of a sudden it'll pop open. That's the only way I know sure fire way to get that Caligo apart. Now besides that, I uh, just wanted to say what finally happened. I took it apart for a second time and this time um, uh, I was, uh, let's see, what did I do? Oh, I'm skipping, I'm skipping something. Okay, after after I did it the first time and then put it back together and then a month later it stopped working uh, I did something that um, temporarily uh, I didn't have to take it apart it worked for a while and that's what the video is, is about um, it works for a while and if your switch isn't too dirty it may solve the problem but if not you may have to do what, what I did but this is anyway how you can clean the switch without taking it apart and it works maybe not permanently but when I took it apart and cleaned it that wasn't permanent either but so this is what I did okay here is the Caligo like so okay That's where you put the game in. And the black switch was here. But why it's not here, that I'm leading up to that and can't tell you right now. But anyway, the switch was on there when I done this. The black switch. And it's not a switch, it's just a big black tube on top of the real switch because the board is down toward the bottom. So this is I thought I wonder if there's any way to see the switch any vent and I thought I don't think there's any vent um, you know here's the vents and I said I don't think there's any 
you know, close to the switch. And then a few days later, I kind of was playing around with it and turned it up. And I said, well, look at that. I said, there's vents all the way across and right by right by the switch and I thought I wonder if this would work so this is how you can clean the switch and make it work good and you without taking it apart unfortunately it may not be a permanent solution but it will work and it won't hurt you Nintendo I me mean, your Coligo uh, if you use the uh, IC chip cleaner with no residue don't just don't just spray liquid cleaner in it or whatever uh. so this is what I did and there's probably more than one way to do it I looked under here and I got a small flashlight and as you see when you put it here you see that the light sometimes flashes up to these vents here that are even closer to the switch and so you can uh, put the flashlight under these vents or the ones closer and like that I had some success here and what what I did was I had it about here and, and then I was looking through these vents and then at the same time I was moving the switch back and forth and then I was moving the flashlight and looking and then I suddenly saw the black bar go back and forth and I said that's it that's where the box is um, the switch so underneath the bar has got to be the switch so then when I saw where it was yeah. I would flash the flashlight where it was and turn it off and then I would aim it and then turn the flashlight on until I was sure that I had it right under the switch right on the box of the switch and I took the cleaner and I stuck it through the vent to the it's it's about the last vent before this next set to the left of the switch and stuck it in here, aimed it toward the switch, raised it up a little bit, but aimed it toward the bottom of the of the bar to where the switch box was. Nice. So I moved it in here as close as I could, right in the hole. It will go right in the vent, and then I squirted two or three long bursts. I'd squirt a long burst, and then I would move this switch back and forth, and then I stuck it in and squirt another long burst. And I could tell that the switch was going differently than it had got in the switch. So then I hooked up the Caligo and it worked. And it played great. But about a month later, it gave me trouble again. So I did it again. I stuck this in here. I squirted it through the vent. Aimed it. Looked at it with the flashlight. Cleaned it and didn't have to take it apart. And move the, and then uh, it worked again, but then I noticed the switch was getting harder to move. And then this about the third time, uh, then it worked about a month, and then it done the same thing. It started messing up again. So this time I couldn't move the switch because the switch has got a lubricant in it, as mentioned by one person. It's it's like a grease. And he, he took it apart and put the grease back in. Well, I couldn't do that. Um, but he mumbled something real fast, saying something about W40. And I thought, it's got to have some kind of lubricant because I can't move it anymore. So, to make a long story short, I had to take the Caligo apart again. But like I was saying, when you spray it the first time, It'll clear up your problem, but it may come back. And when the switch gets too stiff to move, you're going to have to take it apart. So I got to thinking that switch 
is a lot of trouble. The plastic one, I thought it may look ugly or something, but I thought if it gave me more trouble, and I, if I left out the top switch, then I could just I could just stick this in the hole here and then just put it directly on the switch and give it a few quick bursts. I thought that would be a lot easier. I could just, the hole was big enough you could stick your finger in and move the switch. And it, I thought it would bother me, but really it doesn't look that bad at all. I don't even notice it. I would rather do that than to have a Radio Shack switch here and pay somebody to do it. And every time you do something like that, it could make some unwanted results on the screen. Because this right here is modded for AV, but it's all through like a cable like you would have for a camcorder. And it works except for one thing. The screen is a little bit to the left. Now if you put a different switch in, it might change something too. You never know. That would be the last resort, is using the Radio Shack switch with the toggle. So, right now, I'm getting great results. It's been more than a month, and it's worked better than all the other times I cleaned it. But I did one extra little thing, and this is what I did. I had to take this bad boy apart again and with my screwdrivers I popped it out again and um, oh, incidentally I thought it only had six screws and I said why well, won't this thing come apart but I think it actually has eight screws and I thought it only had six that was a problem until I took the last two screws out so anyway, to, to uh, make a long story short as I possibly can, I took it apart a second time, and I said, well, here we go again. And, and then I tried to take the switch out with a, with a soldering iron, and I was having too much trouble. So I put the solder back in the ends, decided that I'm not going to mess with it. I'll pay somebody to do it, but... I'll try cleaning it again. So I got out my cleaner and I sprayed it again. But I remembered this guy talking that he put like a grease on it. and But I, uh, I couldn't get the grease in because I wasn't going to take the switch apart. I mean, th that would be extremely hard to put it back together to take it apart. And I couldn't even desolder it right. But I remember he was mumbling about W40. And I thought, that might hurt the board, but if I give a quick burst, then it shouldn't run over the entire board, and just a little bit around the switch. So I took a chance, and after I cleaned it again with IC Cleaner, sprayed it real good, about two or three sprays, this is what I did, and it's working good right now. He said something about W40, and I thought, well, it needs a lubricant to, so the switch won't be dry. When it's dry, you practically can't move it off and on. So I got W40 with it taken apart, and I get two quick bursts right in the switch. After I squirted this, and I cleaned it again. So now it's clean. And now it's making better contact because it has a lubricant on it. So I thought, I will leave the black switch out of here so that if this thing gives me any more problems, I'll just be able to stick this right in the hole, spray it, and take the W40 in and put it right on top of the, the crack of the switch and give it a quick burst. So far, I haven't had to do it. it it's working perfect. And that is how to clean the switch without taking it apart. Unless you have more trouble with it like I did. It will work temporarily and it may be a permanent fix for you. I don't know. 
but that's how you clean the switch it's and also if you have to take it apart that may be the solution without having to take the switch out or anything just squirt it with the cleaner a couple of quick bursts of W40 leave the black part out so that if you have to clean it again you won't have to stick it in the vents you won't have to take it apart hopefully and and it'll solve your problem I hope mine's working fine for now better than it ever has and let's see how many minutes oh it don't say that the uh, the camcorder I don't know I would like to hook it up real fast but I gotta leave the camcorder so bear with me and I'll hook it up real fast and one other thing I wanted to say <laughs> are you waiting uh, for the super game module like I am um, if you are I just wanted to show you what I bought but I haven't got the super game module yet but I got Shigani And I was so happy, but I didn't get this on Collector Vision or Team Pixel Boy. I got it on Good Deals Video. They sell the cartridges too, and they're easier to order than the other places. I was supposed to send them an email. My computer always blocks it and won't let me get on his email. So I got it at Good Deals. They just happen to have about two copies left of Rally X. And he sent me a letter and said if I didn't pay for it soon, he said he, you know, kind of hinted like he wasn't going to hold, hold it forever. So I sent him the money, and then he turned around and said that he couldn't send them to me until after the weekend. But he did send them pretty fast. And here's the last one that I ordered requiring the Super Game Module. Twin B. That's a pretty good one. And I think the music sounds better uh, than the Sega 1000 version, which I've listened to it. And the music, well, the other version that is, the Nintendo version, I don't like the music. The music is different in this one. It's a little bit more pleasant. It's similar, but more pleasant. And one last thing. This has been a big hit. And they've changed the box. This is the new box. Uh, if you know about the homebrews, you probably know about the light cycle grid. That's this is the new box. And he said something that he would, so he did. He he uh, got a new box for it. I thought I, the old box just shows a arcade. It says light grid. It's all dark. You can't see this. You can see the three light cycles really neat but the only thing about it was he didn't put this picture on the cartridge he put the old picture of the dark arcade game and you couldn't hardly see it and I got to thinking oh I, I would like to have have something like that on the cartridge so my printer was still working and I took a picture of this And I put a plastic covering over it, and I, this I am this, uh, I am probably the only <laughs> person with a copy of the light cycle uh, that looks like this. So here we go. Take a close look. I hope the camera focuses. Look at that, just like the box. Isn't that cool? Now that's cool purple line right at the edge pretty neat now that makes a good cover for a cartridge but theirs is just an old black arcade game but anyway that's the mod I did for my light cycle and it's just like what they said one guy said he was playing it every day and it is fun enough to play every day uh, there's 45 levels and I've only played about nine of them 
but uh, they are real fun. Uh, so that was it. Um, if you bear with me, I'm going to hook it up real fast and just show you that it works. Um, if it does, <laughs> that it co everything comes on quick. It has anyway. As soon as I put up a, uh, in a cartridge, uh, before I'd have to take it out and re-clean it. And now it's working great. What I did was cleaned it and then I sprayed it a couple of bursts of, of W40, but I had it, t I had it, I took it apart. And then, just to be safe, I wiped the excess oil around the corner um, that came from the W40. But it, it didn't cover the whole motherboard just because the switch is only on the corner, fortunately. But I did that as an extra precaution. So, let me see, I don't know. Uh, I don't know how many minutes this has been going. Anyway, let me hook it up real fast. And just in case you want to see it, the Caligo in action, bear with me as I move the camera back. And real quickly, I'll just plug in maybe two cartridges. And I don't know. Um, I can either show the TV or the Caligo, so I guess I will just show the TV set. So there's the TV set and we'll zoom it in here like that. And bear with me as I hook up a, a game controller and And perhaps oh, put in a few games here. Here I'm putting this in. Oh, I've got to hook it up. Oh. Gotta see, gotta hook it up. And take about a minute because I gotta put the cable in. Uh, incidentally, what really works great if you send off for um, the Caligo controller, this joystick where it pops on the top, this really works good. Man, this is great for games like Pac-Man, Nibbler, and all kind of maze games or whatever. Works great. Although it may pop off. Uh, I glued it on. It's never going to come off. <laughs> I put epoxy glue on it. It kept coming off. Uh. Uh. Okay, here's the cables. I'm putting them in real quick like. Uh, let's see here. Okay, the Caligo will be plugged up as soon as I get the controller on it. Uh, Got to get it plugged in. Here we go. And I guess I'll get on my hands and knees and, and perhaps I'll put in Nibbler, maybe Droll. And frostbite. I also got that on Good Deals, which used to be called um, something heaven or other game heaven. I don't know. Anyway, that's it. I got to turn on the TV. I'll stick my finger through the hole and turn it on. It doesn't bother me. It's been working great. Okay, so that's it. We turn on the TV set. And I will just turn this on. Let me let me check to make sure this is still working. 
Yeah, okay. And send it to the game and then that's it. I will just pop this in. I'm sorry, I can't show the Caligo, but that's what I'm doing. I'm putting a cartridge in real quick and I'll let you see the TV instead. And it should pop on pretty quick because it has never been cleaned this good before and until I did the two procedures together. So anyway, I got to get on my hands and knees here. Uh, so I'm going to put a nibbler and let's hope that it turns on immediately. It has been. Okay, here we go. Here's Johnny. <laughs> here we go. I'm turning the switch on on the Caligo. Uh, just like that. Nibbler. I've always had trouble with Nibbler. It's just like, uh. I'll try it again. See, there it is. Nibbler is, is the one game that has always given me trouble, but I usually had a lot more trouble getting it on. I had to jiggle it, and you see, I didn't, didn't take too long to get it on. And last time, it come on even quicker. And this is the one that gave me a lot of trouble coming on. So, I'll show this real quick. And there we go. Except it's too loud. Let me turn the volume down. It's going by itself. That's a little better. Well, that's it. Who says it needs a Yamaha chip? Don't that sound just as good? And so that's it. I'll turn that off. How embarrassing, but that's the way Nibbler is. It's the first time it gave me trouble. How embarrassing that it didn't come on at first, but it, I did get it on pretty quick. So, but that that cartridge has given me man, more trouble than the other ones. And like I say, it, the, gradually the cartridges get dirty, the clips get dirty, and like I say, if it gives me any more trouble, I will just squirt it. Okay, I'll try draw. I'm turning it on. Look at that, come right on, instantly. Look how clear the picture is. Perfect graphics. Oh no, it's the turkey! Yeah, that's a hard one to get. Ah! Well, uh, this game is not easy. Yeah, that's how you do it, like that. There's the little girl. Uh, it's not easy to see. The little girl and, and the alligator, you got to get them. It's only got three levels and it's hard. I like the music though. If you drop down when they're around, they'll immediately go to you. You got to let them... Okay, see? Oh, got me. Uh, 
Uh, I'm only doing this to show you anyway, so I gotta turn it off. But the graphics are great. You gotta let that turkey get away. It's hard to hit the fire button of this, and that's why I got a different controller too. Yeah. There, got the little girl. And then you gotta get her pet alligator <laughs> to go to the next level. So that's it. I'll just show you frostbite real quick. There's the alligator right up there. Here we go. That's it. Next level. So that's it. Okay. Now I'll show frostbite. I'm getting ready to stick it in. Oh, and now I gotta turn it on. See, look at that, see? Comes on automatically. It's working great. The switch is working great. See how the new version of Frostbite, this one was so popular that I think they reordered it because uh, Good Deals was selling it. And um, out of all the discount Kligo games, this was, um, well, turned up for sale anyway. You know, you could say to yourself, oh, you could say to yourself, well, you know, when I get this, you know, I can just download it or whatever. Oh, I'm running out of time. But the thing is, is when you get this, you get the instructions, and sometimes it helps you to to play better. Oh! So that's it. Then you go into the... Oh! Yes, I got nervous. See, I'm playing this joystick. I usually play my other controller. And then that's it. Yeah, this has only got eight levels. I wish I had more levels. Ah. Oh. And this is it. Okay. So that's it. Just wanted to show the Caligo works pretty good after I clean the switch. It may have to be cleaned again, but push comes to shove. Um, I'll get somebody else to solder that Radio Shack switch in the hole if it comes to that. But right now it's working. And I can stick the cleaner right in the hole and put it right on top of the switch if I have to clean it again. That's it. Uh, goodbye. And we go.